In this video, we're going to head back out to the electrosmog energy converter. There's a link in the description for a video about that. And we're going to set up some perpetual lighting. And we're also going to take a look at a little perpetual light that's operating off the energy collector on top of the barn. Now the word perpetual in this video is going to be used a little bit loosely, meaning that it's going to continue as long as the ambient energy is available. So let's get at it. Boy, probably 200 feet away, 250 feet away. <laughs> perpetual lighting. So I'm going to leave that on. <laughs> Pretty cool. I wonder if anybody will say anything about that. If they see, well, it gets pointed towards house and barn, so I guess we're probably the only ones that are going to see it. Well, it looks like I got one bad diode that's not working. Sun is coming up. So, not quite full daylight. That's 99 LEDs, and I guess I'll have to take some of that angle a little bit funny, but they're all on. I'll have to uh, take it apart and get that one diode out of there and replace it. And this is the testing station for the electro-smog energy converter. <laughs> now I have to be very careful when I turn this on. These LEDs are high voltage sensitive. There are 99 of them hooked in the series and there's a capacitor in there for filtering and there's a potentiometer there so I can adjust the resistance when I first started up. When I first started up, it's all got to be connected good, shorted out with the shorting switch here, and when I turn it on, it won't spark and be going through the LEDs right away. So turn that on. It's kind of hard to keep on. It's hard to see. It's full daylight right now. So it's hard to see the light, but they look like they're all on. And then I can reduce the resistance. And this would be the brightest. I don't know if it's hard to tell if it made much of a change. But this is what I'm going to leave on now all the time. Probably have to point it back towards the house so I can see it. It'd be interesting to see how this looks at night. I guess I might put like maybe a hood around this too or something, a reflective hood. But that's what I'm going to do. And take this down. Shut that off, short it out, disconnect this. Probably, I'm going to take this other circuitry I have there out. Um, this is my spark gap voltage reduction. And hopefully I had it on. That'd be off right there with that little nice switch. On, and let's see. And you can hear it running. It's a spark gap reduction through this inductor into those electrolytic storage capacitors. And I had this working on the 12 volt, at 12 volt on that pulse motor I showed in the other video. It works, but I don't trust this to run LEDs continuously. You know, I'm not real comfortable with how this works yet. It is working, it hasn't failed yet, but. I don't trust it to leave it unsupervised for a long time. So over the winter, I'm going to take this off and just shut it off. Short it out, and I will connect that up and where this is at and leave that on all the time. And this is my other perpetual light that I leave on all the time now. Six LEDs. 
connected to my apparatus on the roof of the barn. Showed that in another video. And I just got the circuit here, lead in wire, and the other one goes to a ground. Just have full full wave bridge rectifier, you can't see it, and I have a capacitor across here to try to filter it out. Those are the 1N4007 diodes. And I think this is just a one microfarad capacitor. And we'll just have that hooked up all the time. So it's always inspiring now to see that. I got the lights on inside here too. It's not full bright, but it's pretty decent. And it's just kind of fun to have that on all the time. I can back up and shut the light off. A little bit cloudy outside, so I can see it pretty good. And this one is all powered by the apparatus I have on top of the barn roof. It's not, doesn't work as a crystal radio antenna. It's mostly just static that I'm picking up, but it's pretty consistent. And this is the schematic of the circuit that I'm using. And these are the parts. It's for the bridge rectifier. This is a passer I'm using. Just stuff I had, I grabbed. And these are the LEDs that I'm using. And for the circuit outside, the schematics is pretty much the same, except for the bridge. I'm using 2,000 volt diodes. I don't know if you can see that, but there's higher voltages out there to deal with. And out there, there is a grounding switch. I put two capacitors in a series, and outside, right here in this part of the circuit, I put a potentiometer so I could change the resistance. And out there, I have 99 LEDs in the series. So that's pretty much how these little perpetual lighting devices I have work. You know, outside it's just that framework for the antenna on the barn. It's just that framework I have on top of the barn. And just a standard grounding rod. Well, it's not quite dark yet. It's getting there. I want to see if I can get a voltage operating voltage reading on this. So... I'm going to turn this on, and it comes on, and turn it up, that's as high as it will go. Now I'll see if I can get a voltage re reading across the thing. Oh, I'm not quite getting it quite there. Kind of windy out here. There, operating at about 230 volts. Pretty darn bright. It's not full bright. It's probably operating at around 90 to 100 microamps. It's not a lot of power, but those LEDs sure are coming out pretty bright. I could probably put more in series. I bet you I could probably do another 50 in series without dimming them down. Because I got this setup here was char getting charged up to about a thousand volts. It's drawn down now with this load. And it's about 230, 230 volts. But <laughs> I'll come back when it's a little bit darker. Well, it's mostly dark now, and there's the light. Pretty bright. Perpetual light, courtesy of the transmission line electrosmog. <laughs> this is probably 
about 30 feet away. And we'll walk on up to it again. Yeah, looks like all the LEDs are on. Get up there close. Looks like they're all on. Usually when I got them hooked in a series, when one goes out, they'll all go out. Uh, this was probably about $14 worth of LEDs. Hopefully it will stand for quite a while. It's kind of weird if <laughs> you can have a light like that not just with this little boards on the tiny bit of wire in the ground. You can see it shining on my hand. I guess you can read by it if you wanted to. Incredible. This type of lighting really wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for these little LEDs because they use such tiny amounts of power to light up and even below their ratings. The ambient energy powering the outdoor lights is from the extended energy fields off that transmission line, well, of course, and it's coming in at 60 cycles a second. Now that setup is off the easement, so there's not a problem for that being there. The ambient energy powering this little light, well, that's kind of a little different story. The prevailing frequency is constantly changing and it's all over the place. I've seen it from 20 hertz to up to 2 megahertz. It's kind of just like a static of all the frequencies, so I'm not quite sure where it's coming from. Last week, the power went out here. The grid went down for a little while. And I came out and checked the light here, checked this little light. But the energy levels hadn't changed, so I know it's not getting any energy from the electric service or the wiring of the house and barn. Now again, that high voltage transmission line is about 80 to 100 yards to the north. It could be getting a little energy from that, but it's not showing up on the frequency meter. So I'm not sure what's going on. Um, it just seems to be some type of static. It seems, you know, right around that 12 kilohertz, it, it, mostly where it's stained, so I don't know what that is. So there you have it. Thanks for checking out this video, and I'll see you again.